Oklahoma City has the dubious distinction as the largest city for tornado activity. But still, mention May 3rd, 1999 to almost anyone here, and they'll tell you. It was just a monster. It was an incredible tornado. Like Very large tornado. Oh, About six down. miles northeast of us. That day, an unforgettable tornado ripped through parts of Oklahoma City and its suburbs, killing at least 36, injuring several hundred, and causing over a billion dollars in damage. It's difficult for the atmosphere to put something like that together, but when it does, it's striking, and that's, that's what sticks with me to this day. Greg knows about severe weather. He's a meteorologist at the Storm Prediction Center, located just south of Oklahoma City in Norman. The mission of the Storm Prediction Center is the protection of life and property by getting the word out in advance of hazardous weather events such as tornadoes and severe thunderstorms. Tornadoes occur in all 50 states, even in Alaska. Nationwide, they're reported year-round, but in the springtime, the area known as Tornado Alley is ground zero. Tornadoes often strike with little or no warning. In the U.S., they kill about 70 people a year and injure close to 1,500. At the Storm Prediction Center, meteorologists stand guard 24 hours a day, seven days a week tracking weather systems that could unleash tornadoes and issuing storm watches as needed. I think probably this year is good enough to consider a tornado considering the last rates. The ingredients that make up a tornado, like wind speed, temperature, and moisture content, all have to be just right for tornado formation. You take away just a small bit of, of your ingredients and you end up with something that's uh, a rain shower as opposed to a, a violent storm. And we don't understand necessarily the mixing and matching of these, these ingredients for all these variety of recipes to produce tornadoes. To better understand tornadoes, scientists like Yvette Richardson, with the help of the National Science Foundation, are embarking on a quest to unravel the mysteries of tornadoes. This will hopefully give us the knowledge we need to improve warnings, to maybe improve forecasts, to improve our, our general understanding of how something works always arms us better. The project is called Vortex 2, but it could also be called the Amazing Chase. For five weeks in 2009 and again in 2010, 100 researchers and scientists from 16 universities will deploy about 40 vehicles armed with high-tech equipment. They'll crisscross the Midwest in search of tornadoes, all to better understand how, when, and why they form. We'll measure size distributions of precipitation that's falling inside the storms. Uh, we're trying to determine the role that that might play in, in aiding tornado genesis. Uh, and set these down, jump back in the van, wait for the storm to pass, uh, and then kind of try to do it all again. So uh, we'll be experiencing hail. We both brought helmets and rain gear and all that to wear, so probably be getting pelted in the head a little bit with uh, hailstones and things as they fall. Vortex 2 will also examine the winds inside a tornado near ground level. Well, the lower levels are important because that's where we live, and those are the winds that impact us, and those are the winds we have very little information about. Unmanned aircraft will venture into the storms to measure winds, temperature, and moisture. And safety is a concern. Researchers are required to have an escape route for each storm they encounter. And then there's the challenge of being away from home. I'm actually bringing my mother over for five weeks <laughs> to help, help babysit. And it is rough on the family. Uh, but they're also very, very supportive because they understand that we're all involved in trying to do something that will benefit them, benefit our community. So really in the end, it's a lot of support and a lot of love that they give us, and we need that when we're out on the field. Researchers will often be working 14-hour days or longer, fueled by a common passion. A tornado is just air, but it's air that is amazingly organized into this vortex that has such power. You really have to just step back and have great respect for the ability of nature to do something like that. For Science Nation, I'm Bruce Burkhardt.